Hey, everybody, welcome to Mailbag Monday, where we take time and answer questions that people have sent in, mailed in, text in, and we've got a ton of them, so uh, I guess we ought to just jump in and start. Thank you so much for being a part of our program today. Yes. Okay, um, as a Christian, should I always have an answer for things people ask? A lot of times, I don't know the answer to something. Are there just certain things we aren't going to understand? Well, sure. There's a lot of stuff you're not going to understand. Yeah. Uh, I, I know everything myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry uh, I don't know about Mike. We're just speaking great. I've got an answer for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've said a lot of times, you've you got to yeah. tell people, I don't know. I mean, especially, especially when I went from being the secular workplace as an engineer to being a minister, and people thought you knew everything. Well, what do you know about this? You know about this? No. Well, what about this in the end times? I don't know. I need to study it. You know about this? No. I need to study that too. What did you study in Bible school? A lot. The Bible's a really big book with a whole lot of stuff in it, and it takes time to kind of marinate. So don't be intimidated by not having an answer. Tell people, look, I don't know, but I'll ask somebody. I've done that a lot. I'll ask somebody smarter than me. You know, and I know a lot of smart people. I'll get an answer for you. May not be the one you want, but I'll get you an answer. That's why it's good to have smart people. Smart friends. Don't that you wish good. you had one? I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I did. So, uh, but it, it's everybody goes through this. Everybody has it happen to them, especially Christians. Uh, somebody that's a new Christian or not a Christian, and they think maybe you know the answer. You know who's the Antichrist? I said I don't know. You know, I hope I'm not here when he's when he's around. So, I don't a lot know. of times people have questions that they're, they're like, they're not that generic. I mean, it's like, well. Our whole church prayed for this person to get healed, and they didn't. Yes. Those are the kind of questions yes. that, that I I used to have a hard time with. But there are some questions where you have to realize the, the Bible says that, that God knows the heart of man. The Spirit of God knows the heart of man. Yeah. Um, in a situation like that where maybe someone passed away, and it seems like everybody was praying for them, and they, were, they said that they were healed, and they were standing for their healing, but they died anyway. Yes. And it's like, well, why, why did that happen? Well... I, I've, I've always, I think we've talked about this before, but um, I'm convinced that, that first of all, that you, you have no idea that person probably said they were believing God, but... I don't know their heart. I, only I, God knows their heart. There's some people that just get tired. Yep. I'm just ready to go, but they yep. won't tell their family because their family would let them have it. Yeah. I mean, seriously, <laughs> yeah. there's people who's like, if they said, uh, honey, I love you, but I'm, I'm tired. I, I just, I just, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm over. I'm, yeah. I'm done. But you imagine your spouse don't want to hear that. Yeah. And a lot of people feel so guilty about it. They would, they'd never say anything, but you don't know their heart. And if they're not really believing God, well, we used to say they're it? not lying. They're just not telling the truth. Yeah. 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 That's, that's true. So there are questions that you're, you're not going to understand. Um, there's questions like, well, why there's this person wasn't born again, didn't go to church and, uh, they walked in, they got healed. And here's all these people that have been in the church forever they and believe in God they for got healed this, and this person's never, never cracked the door of a church yep. and never, they walked never in their and Bible. got off their crutches immediately. As yep. as, and it's like, how do you answer that? And there's, there's some things that the spirit of God knows that you're, we're not going to know, but most things I think the Bible. Well, is, we've talked about before you're responsible for yourself. I don't know what they thought. I'm responsible for me. I, I need to know what I believe. You know, I need to work on my faith. I need to meditate in the Word of God. I need to guard my heart. I don't know about other people. I'm going to love them, be nice to them, do the best I can. If they're thirsty, give them water. You know, if they're sick, nurse them back to health. If they're in prison, go visit them. But I don't know your heart. I don't know that. Yeah. we got a couple of chatty Cathy's here today. <laughs> <laughs> and moving around yeah. along. Okay, the next one is... Um, do marriages with kids have a better chance of lasting? If so, if the marriage is rough, is having children a good idea? Uh, yeah, having children is a great idea. It's a God idea. God said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. He hadn't changed his mind. God said children were a gift from him. They're a gift. Uh, most all, most all, the vast majority of all divorces happen to married people with children. That's the vast majority. And so you can't say, well, that's, that's the reason. No, no, it's not the reason. It's people just give up, quit doing it, quit trying. Uh, there's rules to being married, you know, things you can do and not do, should say and not say. There's a, you got to know what the Bible says about being married. Marriage was God's idea. He thought it up. Second greatest thing a human can ever do on this planet besides getting born again is get married. 
Now, some people are destined to not be married, and they shouldn't get married. If they get married, they'll mess their life up in somebody else's. But 99.9% .9 of all humans, I think, personally, ought to get married. Not good for man to be alone. God's not changed his mind. And I've seen a lot of people, especially at this age, where they wait until their kids graduate from high school, and then they decide to divorce. Yeah, they've just been waiting around. Yeah. And, um, and that's it, it doesn't matter if your kids are 2 or 20 or 30. It's going to hurt your kids. That's right. So um, that's easier, I can tell you, having been through divorce, it is easier to work on your marriage yes. than it is to cause that much pain uh, in so many lives. It is. I would say that having kids brings a whole new, I mean, it's there's, there's struggles, there's pluses and minuses to everything in life, but uh, it brings a whole new dimension to your, It I mean, I remember when we had uh, our kids, it was like, it felt like there was glue there that, you know, I mean, you yeah. you felt more. The, I think a lot of times what happens is you, it, it, it should be a plus having kids. Because God made it just like, you know, when a husband and wife come together, they're stronger. He's He didn't make kids to come along to make you weaker. No. I mean, it's supposed to be a, a positive thing. It's supposed yes. to be stronger if you do it right. Yes. But if you completely forget your relationship with each other because of the kids, that's where I've seen... Uh, uh, moms can especially fall into it and dads can fall into it too but you put the priority on the kids and you overlook each other's needs and then you find out you grow apart everybody's been there first baby shows up you go to the bottom of the food chain if you're a man <laughs> yeah. he's like that woman loves me not when the first baby comes along <laughs> well I was married for 10 years before I had children and I some things I didn't realize. I didn't realize how selfish I had become. And it it opened a whole new world to me. Everybody was talking about how how selfish you were. I you don't didn't know even you... know me then. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was talking about it. <laughs> and I so, wrote a couple books about it. But it, but it, it, is a, um, uh, it is enlightening what a child will bring to your life if you allow it to. I mean, love is a choice. So a child can just totally make enhance everything or or it can stress be the most stressful thing that's ever happened uh but it's just really on your heart and how it how it's you know goes towards it like mike you have two stepchildren uh -huh. and so those that was a choice to be father of them and to, yeah. to love them and you raised them and done a great job and and uh so <laughs> but but um no, no parent looks at their kid and think yeah boy, i know boy, i, know, I, just, I, know, I but... just batted a thousand there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, those kids might... have to forgive me for all the <laughs> yeah for all you know i <laughs> I, I know i was kiddingly i always say i'm gonna start if i had to do it over again i would start a little fun for all the counseling they're gonna need to overcome everything that <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> yeah 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 i had to like like put a fund aside just for their therapy <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know with that in mind you need to think uh, most all characters in the bible were raised by horrible parents Oof. almost every major character in the bible had horrible parents king david the king all kings are measured against had horrible parents Three of his brothers rode with Saul to kill him dead. He wanted brother. He had brothers that wanted him dead. They didn't just abuse him. They want him dead. And so everybody grows up in a messed up situation. There's no perfect family. Well, my daddy don't only love me. My mom had only done this. And my brother hadn't done this. Quit making excuses. There are no excuses. Mm -hmm. You got God. Go on. Do something. Be somebody. Help somebody else. Quit thinking about you all the time. I mean, me, I, and I. It's like you got to get out of that eventually. And that's the best thing that a child does is it takes the focus off of what I was going to say a while ago, uh, off of me. Because before, for 10 years, all I ever thought about was my husband and I. Yep. And then from the moment they placed him in my arms, yeah. everything changed. Every time um, I walked into a store or walked into to a grocery store or for clothes, I thought about what does he need yeah. first. Yeah. And it really shows you the love of God. So I think children can enhance your life and your marriage and every part. Yeah, you, you come out of the grocery store, your grocery cart's full and there's nothing that you want. <laughs> what? I got nothing I want. What, what happened? Children are a blessing to dads. Like, I, I had a blast with my kids. Of course, it was at their expense, you know. Yeah. Yep. I used to, like, like, I remember my my middle son. Uh, he uh, He was probably in the probably fifth or sixth grade. And he'd, like, bring some friends over. 
and I'd be upstairs and I could hear him talking down there and I'd, I'd yell over the banister, hey, hey, Luke, uh, have you seen my cream? This rash is just... just <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Don't do that. I pulled up. And my youngest that. son was at the bus stop with all of his friends, <laughs> and he must have been in like the third or fourth grade. And some guy picked me up in a a junkyard uh, pickup truck that he was. I was going to help him do some stuff, but he had this this pickup truck from a junkyard. And I mean, it looked like it wasn't legal. There's no way this thing was legal. It was a. It looked like a Sanford and Sons yeah. uh, truck that was like rusted out. But like uh, I was sitting in the passenger seat. And uh, we happened to be pulling by the corner where my kid was waiting for the bus to go to school, and all his <laughs> friends were out there. I rolled down the window and I said, "Hey, Luke, where are our Josh? We're uh, we're gonna go wash Mom's truck." <laughs> <laughs> And just rolled up the window and we just kept on going and stuff. And it just embarrassed. I just love, I, yeah, I don't know. That's a good dad right good. there. <laughs> okay, I just got to add to that. When I was in high school, I had a friend whose dad had a funeral parlor. And oh. one day he picks her up and <laughs> hearsed. Oh, <laughs> and awesome. we're all standing out there. And she's like, she is, we're from Georgia, very southern. She goes, dog, daddy, I told you not to do that. <laughs> It was pretty funny, I well, have to say. The, so back to the question that the, the kids typically, if you do things right, we have well, we have a marriage book, and we have a, a book on 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 raising your kids. But if you uh, go to JoeMcGee dot com, go to the store JoeMcGeeStore dot com or JoeMcGee dot com, either one, you get you there. But God knows how to raise your kids, even if you don't. Is is it's huge. loaded? It's an encyclopedia. Get that and it's get loaded. the marriage book because yeah. if I mean between those two books, if you you follow the things that Joe teaches in there, um, you're not going to have any problem at all. But overall, it's meant to strengthen your relationship. Yeah. So I'd say everything yeah. God did, everything that's come up in your life. Uh, when the children of Israel were going to the Promised Land, the Bible says ten times God tested them on that trip. Ten times God tested them. He's trying to get them to use their faith. He's no different than me. God's going to test me to try to get me to use my faith. Without faith, you don't please God. Without faith, you don't whip the devil. Faith is critical. God's going to push your faith. I don't care who you are. You're a single mom, married the third, fifth time, doesn't matter. God's going to try to get you to use your faith. And so you've got to buck up and start using eventually because he's not going to let up. God loves you enough. He's going to force you to use your faith. It's a good thing. I did think of this, though. Uh along this line is that it, it depends on the situation because you ask, uh, it, does it have a better chance of lasting if you have kids? And if so, does, if, if so, if the marriage is rough, is having children a good idea? Having kids will bind you together and cause you to become less selfish. Yes. And that to me is the number one thing. You quit looking at me, 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 and you start living for your husband or your wife yep. and your kids. And you become less selfish if you doing it right and so therefore it will make things stronger but having kids if one of you is a liar or one of you is, is it's going to push all that of, to the surface yeah it depends on what the situation is if it <laughs> if, if all it is is that you guys want to feel closer yeah it'll make you feel closer but if it's not going to fix problems that nope you know it's not going to there's fix no anything. shortcut to fixing yeah. problems yeah so if you might want to deal those on your own before having kids might be a good Listen, idea. You, you, God didn't tell you to have 24 kids, but it wouldn't hurt. You know, having a lot of kids won't make you holy and famous no more than having no kids. I've, I've done funerals for two individuals who were great couples, married a long time, had a great life, but one of them passed away. And both individuals at both those funerals said, I don't know why we didn't have any kids. I got nobody to leave nothing to. I got nobody now. Had a great time as a couple. Then all of a sudden, one of them's gone like, now what? It's just you. All you. And God never intended that. God intended us to live for us. God intended us to live for other people. And being a parent starts that process. Because you realize well, it's my kids now, and it's my neighbor, and it's the guy at work, and it's it's my in-laws and my parents. I need to be helping a lot of people. And God's trying to train us. He's trying. To, he loves us enough. He's going to try to train us. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us today. Uh, we always enjoy spending our Mondays with you. Uh, if you um, are watching us on Instagram, 
uh, or Facebook, please share with your friends. Yes. If you're watching us on YouTube, please uh, push the subscribe button so uh, you'll it'll come right to the top of the page when we put out a new program. Yeah. And if you'd like to be a partner, you can go to our website and there's real easy. Once you open it up right there, it says, if you'd like to be a partner, we would not be able to do this today without partners. Partners pay for all this. They make this happen. We're, we're reaching millions. I mean millions because our podcast on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we, we take three a week. And it's like they're reaching a ton of people. Now, we still travel and do seminars. We still do about 60 seminars a year. But we're in, that's not near the people we reach through the podcast. So, guys, thank you to our partners for making this happen. And if you're interested in having Joe come to your church, uh, you may be a pastor or you may just be someone who's attending the church. Uh, see if your pastor knows about Joe. Um, because we'd love to come come to your church and, and, and minister. Uh, you guys would love Joe. So, Thank you. Thank you so much. And you're right. Have a great day and a great week. God bless. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.